Replication is a fundamental part of the scientific research process. It is really necessary for scientific conclusions for people to be able to repeat studies that have been done before and see whether the same results can be obtained again. Researchers do replication studies for lots of reasons, but oftentimes they do them because they're trying to understand an area of research. They want to use a particular uh, paradigm, a particular effect in their own research. So oftentimes replication can be the first step towards designing a future study that you might do in an area. Um, it can also be to investigate more closely an effect that's already been studied before. So to get a more precise estimate of an effect size, for example. Um, it can be to understand the phenomenon more deeply. There's a couple of different kinds of replication studies, however. Um, not all replication studies are the same. On one end of a continuum of replication studies, there are uh, conceptual replication studies, and on the other end of that continuum we have direct replication studies. Direct replication studies try to reproduce the results of research as exactly as possible. So as close to what the original researchers did, um, that's what those studies try to do. For conceptual replications, um, researchers are trying to vary important elements of the design. So they want to change the way a variable is operationalized, they want to measure a variable differently, um, and those changes are uh, done in order to test the robustness of a theory. So the idea is that direct replications are trying to reproduce as closely as possible what's been done before. Conceptual replications are trying to extend and build on a particular research question. So if a conceptual replication fails, uh, we can't necessarily be sure whether it's due to a change that we've introduced in the study or if it's due to the fact that the hypothesis underlying the test is actually not true. So when we do direct replications, we can be more confident that a failure is due to um, a type 1 error or some other, kind of, some other kind of issue with the study. Some individuals say that direct replication studies are not very informative. Um, a study can fail for many, many reasons, and it can always be the case that um, an effect was smaller than we thought at the outset, and so we weren't well-powered enough to detect it. And so if researchers are not careful to attend to power, we might uh, inadvertently conclude that there is no effect when, in fact, one does exist, so we're making a type 2 error. We place a lot of reward value in the field of psychology on new and original discoveries. And when people are doing replication studies, perhaps especially direct replication studies, it can be sometimes viewed as boring or just doing the same thing we did before again. And uh, I disagree with this criticism <laughs> as someone who does a lot of replication studies. There's something very powerful about having a lot of confidence that you are doing an accurate, clear test of the hypothesis. And so it's exciting to me. I always want to know how a replication study is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. um, and I, my students who do replication studies with me don't find it any less interesting than doing original research. In psychology, there's actually no such thing as an exact replication. So an exact replication would be duplicating the original experiment that somebody did you know, exactly as they did it. But of course, we always do replication studies at some future point in time after an original study has been done. So it's possible that historical context has changed. It's possible that the participants in the new study are somehow different from uh, the participants who are in the original study. And these kinds of contextual uh, moderators or contextual effects can be really important to take into account. So when researchers are trying to do direct replications, they try to hold many of these elements constant. They try to get participants often who seem somewhat similar to the original participants. They try to uh, take account for historical circumstances that may have changed and make minor adjustments to the procedure as needed. Critics of replication say uh, you can't step in the same river twice. So in some ways, it's, it's impossible to ever observe the conditions that you did before. Maybe this isn't so compelling of an argument when we take into account some of the evidence from large-scale uh, replication studies that have been done, like the many lab studies. And these studies have found that actually 
context effects sometimes are smaller than we might think from the outset. And in fact, context is an important uh, additional hypothesis that we can actually test using replication research. For a lot of years, researchers didn't do replication studies. Um, in fact, uh, estimates in the literature are you know, something like less than 1% of studies uh, until very recent years were replication studies, especially direct replication studies. Um, and we know that the literature up until a few years ago in psychology didn't look very healthy. There were signs that um, many of the effects that we were studying turned out to be perhaps not as robust as we were hoping. Um, and so in order to build a more cumulative science, it's really important for psychologists to uh, incorporate replication into their research. Without it, it is simply impossible to tell true effects from false.